I think I always remember the first day, or it was the first week or something, and I flew down and I was kind of didn't have anywhere to live, and you know, I just turned up at this office and no one knew who I was, and <laughs> it was typical. And I went and had lunch at the cafeteria in the old um, studios there. And they, I think they were recording McFarlane Gadsby that day. And I sat down and had a sandwich. But I was like surrounded by people dressed as spacemen and cowboys. And, and I thought, this is just like Hollywood. This is brilliant. This is amazing. You know, this is, I've arrived. <laughs> um, and it was like that. You know, I learned huge amounts in that time. And the idea was to make a show live five days a week live that appealed more to a teen audience with the stuff that had gone before, like after school, was quite young. Um, and then we got Jason came up with us, Jason Gunn, and he did a show called After Two, which appealed to the young kids. So we had After Two and then this show, 345, which was live five days a week. And I'd done live television before, but um, the five days a week was quite an interesting experience. And and um, we had a director called John Milligan. He came on and he was, uh, so he was directing with me and this very small team and we, were sh we, we went live out of this tiny studio in, um, in t up in, at the Network Centre in Auckland. Twice a week what we'd do is we'd play down three video clips for kids and then they could dial, ring in over the ad break and the, you know, the first caller would or select the second caller or whatever, they'd get to choose which video clip. We'd interview them on, on air and they'd get to choose which clip to play. It was called Pick a Clip. First day we did it, we actually crashed the entire Auckland phone exchange. <laughs> we, we made the six o'clock news. <laughs> so, so it was quite amazing and, and the show was immensely popular. We were a very close group working together, incredibly close, and it was we competed to like working in a band. It was like a band and we often talked about our the first year as the, our first hit, you know, album. And the problem was the follow-up one. What are we going to do you know, for the next album? And the next album and the next album. So we always had that sort of mentality that we had to you know, do better than we did the year before. And, and as long as we were moving forward, I, you know, we, I think we felt we were doing what we, our job, really. Um, but you know, we, had, we ended up getting these little cameras. No one had really used, used the little high 8 cameras, I think they were in those days. And, um, so, you know, we started shooting lots of stuff ourselves. We had, we had crews and all this, but we'd then, and I'd, you know, as a director, I'd often just have a camera and I'd be shooting the second camera. And that hadn't really been done before. Um, but it gave us lots of freedom. And, um, and we, we, I think we actually ended up really capturing the spirit of the presenters and um, really getting a sense of who they were. And they were just a totally relaxed. And the three were, John and Nathan and uh, Petra were amazing. They were just incredible, incredibly good on camera and relaxed. And, um, and they were having a lot of fun and I think they just came across and, and we were very innovative, you know. I had the chance to work with um, Funny Business on, on the show, Funny Business, and really enjoyed it, you know, and, and learnt a lot. Um, learnt enormous amounts actually from that experience. Um, and then as time went by, I sort of ended up working on a couple of other sketch shows, one being Comedy Central and um, that comedy show. Um, and I, through that, I, you know, I met John Bridges and uh, a lot of the other, the Corbett's and, and um, you know, had a lot of you know, opportunity to work with them. Um, and learned a lot about, I, I guess, stuff that actually helped me in my later career in the style of shows that I ended up making a lot, you know, police program and, and then later on the dramas because sketch comedy is always about like one minute you're shooting a western and the next minute then the after that's in the morning in the afternoon you're shooting you know um, I don't know uh, you know a fly on the wall documentary so you're often you're parroting style and form so um, which was great so you did this for you know 12 weeks and you're out there each day each day is different you know every day is different so you learn a lot about the, the style of television the television style and form um, plus you learn about comedy and how jokes work. That was the biggest thing, you know. I, I think that was a secret to Secret Agent Men. It was, it was about a family. And, um, and we treated the kids and the parents pretty, pretty equally and we had a lot of fun with little situations we created in, in the domestic home and, and what we call the domestic stories and, um, and just had a huge amount of fun. The thing was with it was we were work, made it on a, the smell of an oily rag, as usual, but each episode was just like a feature film. And each episode had a whole new premise, you know, or we had this character set up, etc. but we had a new massive premise for each episode. 
Um, and it was always about someone trying to take over the world or destroy the world. It was, you know, we didn't pull the pun any punches. Um, so they were big. It was big concept stuff. Um, but we had comedy and lots of humour and lots of gags and it was gag heavy. And so we got away with a lot, you know. And I had an idea even back from um, Ice TV days about a group of superheroes called the Fantastic Friends. And um, so I went to, to TVNZ and said, look, I've got this idea. It's called Fan the Fantastic Friends. It's about these superheroes. And they said, oh, that sounds good. Develop that. So we developed that. And eventually it became the amazing, extraordinary friends. Mainly because a film came out at the time called The Fantastic Four, so we had to change the name. <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah, so we ended up doing three years of that, of that show, which had its own challenges. Um, and taught, I think, taught us a lot about how to tell stories more than Secret Agent Men did. Secret Agent Men was very much a comedy show, and it, was, um, and it had a structure of a comedy show and a, a half-hour sitcom. But um, The Amazing Extraordinary Friends dealt with bigger themes in a way, bigger mythological themes and um, so we learnt a lot about storytelling from that I, I think and uh, and got I think better as we went you know went on you know <laughs> you hope you get better it was a bizarre experience I think because he often said to us David often said to us I think I've been more recognized from playing this character and <laughs> amazing extraordinary friends than anything I ever did before on TV um, but you know, and he was like, he was great. I mean, he, you know, we were always like very careful with David. One, because he was David McPhail, but two, is you know, he was one of the older members of the cast at the time. And we were, and there was lots of stunts, even you know, lots of tumbling and fighting and rolling around. And he, I think, he'd get quite sort of annoyed that we were sort of treating him with kit gloves. He'd, he'd dive in there and sort of get into the fights, and you know, I think he really enjoyed it. Um, we only, in, and in all three years of the show, I might be wrong. I think we only. Um, doubled him t once. <laughs> there was a, there was a, quite a big fight sequence that was quite complex. So we got a guy into to, to, to play his role <laughs> or to double for him. In the first season, they had these little sketches they ran through the shows, and so in the, in, with the teenage shows, um, I suggested what we do is instead of having different people and families and characters, why don't we just pick pick one family and follow that family through a series of scenarios and adventures. And they were called the Whittlemans. Um, so that was kind of something different that I brought to the show. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I mean, and, um, and again, it was all just based on Nigel's ideas and his books and his writings and his philosophy, really. The adult show, we went to do The Guide to Grown Ups. And um, we kind of, that was the one we just went, I, well, I always felt that was the one we just went, right, here we go. We can, let's make this big. We were doing pieces to camera and fighter jets and up on Mount Hutt and the glacier and helicopters and you know the bigger the better. We just try to push it and push, you know, expand the idea and deal with quite big concepts again. And um, Nigel was so up for that and you know um, and just took it with us in, in a stride really. The concept is a group of teenagers wake up one morning and um, all the adults have vanished and nothing works. So there's no TVs, no cell phones, no internet, and as the show evolves and the story evolves, we learn that there are dark forces creeping into the world. Um, and the main character has to obviously battle these forces and protect her family. So it's all about, again, it's about family and, um, and loyalty and commitment and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, we've been developing that and TVNZ's been immensely supportive, as actually has New Zealand On Air. And, um, and we went through two rounds of... Um, development funding um, and we, at the end of last year we were lucky enough to be funded to make six episodes, so, which we are in the process of building up to now, gearing up for now. I've just spent a year writing it and it's quite a de departure from what I've done before because it's quite, it's, it's quite serious, um, it's quite, quite serious drama as opposed to these very, very few gags in it, <laughs> if none really. Um, so that's been a learning curve for me, um, but lots of fun, yeah.